Hey everyone, today we're talking survival. What safety items to have in your kit, survival tips, and even a survival book recommendation for those readers out there. Hey, you may never find yourself in an emergency situation, but if you do, you want to make sure you have the right gear and the right mindset to deal with it. So let's check it out. Hey, I've been backpacking and hiking for a long time now, but I know enough to know that I don't know everything. In fact, that's the fun part of hiking and backpacking to me is just learning new things. You know, learning new gear, improving your gear, uh, improving your hiking tips so it's just a better experience outdoors. So that's what the idea for the video is today. So I've got three categories of survival gear and survival tips, but I'm really interested to hear what your survival kit contains. I mean, how can we uh, work together as a hiking community to build out a better kit, to build out more knowledge about survival if we ever find ourselves in that situation? So please use the comments field. We can kind of collaborate together and just improve ourselves for experience on the trail. So with that, let's dive into the first category. Did you know that between 700 and 1500 people die each year in the U.S. from hypothermia? So the first few items in our survival kit list are going to be to guard against hypothermia. And the first item is a rain jacket. So this is an outdoor research helium rain jacket, weighs six ounces. And I have a rule that when I go on a day hike, I throw this in my pack regardless of the weather or the forecast. Now, I read a story about a guy who was hiking. It was a nice, sunny, beautiful day. He was even sweating, hiking up the trail. He had shorts and t-shirt with him, but no other clothing. Well, later in the day, some clouds rolled in. He got wet through a rainstorm, and a cool breeze started blowing, and all of a sudden, he was in a hypothermic situation. So, a lot of cases of hypothermia happen in temperatures in the 40s and 50s because people really don't think about guarding against hypothermia in those temperatures. Now for backpackers, there's a couple of items. Uh, first is a nice warm hat. So this is a Z-Pack toboggan hat, but any warm hat will do to hold in the heat. And then I have a Sea to Summit dry sack for my sleeping bag. And I put my sleeping bag in here, I put my hat in here, and I know if everything I own gets soaked on the trail, including my puffy, then that sleeping bag and that hat are bone dry in, inside of that bag. I mean, I could even strip down right there on the trail, get my sleeping bag, you know, and move around and get warm and, you know, get myself warm to the point where I could then maybe get up and make a fire or set up my tent. So that is my, that is my final line of defense against hypothermia. So next on the survival kit list is a whistle. So three blast on the whistle is the universal sign of SOS. Next is water tabs. I know we all have water filters, but what if they stop working? That actually happened to me on our half dome hike. So good to have water tablets. A good headlamp with fresh batteries. This is a Petzl headlamp. Super light, super bright. Next is a mosquito net. So I tell you, you never think about a mosquito net, but if there's a bunch of bugs around and you need it, this is a lifesaver. I picked this one up at Walmart. Uh, while you're in Walmart, go ahead and pick up one of these emergency blankets, and you can throw that in your day pack as well. Uh, next is a, a knife. So I use this small a Swiss Army knife. It's kind of like a three-in-one. Um, it's got a blade, it's got scissors, it's got tweezers, so that's why I like it. Now this is a debatable item. Uh, if I were in a survival situation, I would much rather have a full-size knife, but I just don't carry one because of the weight in my pack. But I'd be interested to hear what kind of knife that you have in your pack. And then a compass. I mean, it's just any time spent in the outdoors, you should have a compass. I picked this one up at Walmart. I know we have a compass on our phone, but what if the battery dies? So very important to have a compass. And then lastly is a spare set of contacts or glasses. I mean, I wear contacts. What if I were on a day hike, you know, up on a mountain and to, and to lose a contact? I mean, <laughs> I'd be essentially hiking one-eyed. Uh, so I, I carry a spare set of contacts. And if you wear glasses, you want to carry a spare set of glasses as well. So hey, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. We really appreciate that and it helps other people find the video. 
So now, on to the second group of survival items and tips. The next survival tip may be the most important of all, and that's to let people know your plans. If you can text a few people exactly where you're going to be, when you're going to be there, when you're going to come off the trail, if you get an emergency situation, your chances of survival go way up. So the next items I'm going to go through, I call the fire-related items. You want to be able to start a fire in any and all situations, and that will especially help you in a survival situation. So, you know, we can use fire to send a signal. We can use it to cook, to warm up, for protection. But there's also a mental benefit of having a fire, especially in a survival situation. So you guys may remember that movie, Castaway, where Tom Hanks finally gets that fire going and how he's celebrating and jumping around. So there is... A real mental boost of being able to have a fire. So I'm going to go few, through a few of my fire items. Um, my fire starter, I use this wet fire tinder cube, which you can get on Amazon. Now I used to be able to buy this in Walmart. I can no longer find it, so it's kind of a hassle. I have to order it online. So I'm curious what your fire starter is, uh, something a little more accessible. You can use the comments field and just let me know what you use. Also, I use a mini bit glider, <laughs> um, waterproof matches as a backup. I have a, a blow tube, which I've used. I've shown this in uh, previous videos. This is extremely helpful in starting fires. Then another thing I'll do, especially if I know that it's going to be a damp, rainy hike, uh, I'll go out a couple weeks before and collect some sticks out of the yard and just keep those in the house and by the time I'm ready for my hike those are all dried out and ready to burn. Also, you know, I'll take some lint from my dryer, throw in here uh, a Brillo pad, that burns really well so I'll put that in here as well. It doesn't weigh much and I can always get a fire started between these items. So yeah, again, curious to hear uh, what you have in your fire starter kit, see if it's something different than what I have. So now on to the third group of survival tips and survival items. Hey, the last topic I have for you today is what I call the three circles of survival. It's just the way I organize my thoughts if I were ever to find myself in an emergency situation. So the first circle is my being, myself. So am I bleeding? Do I need to stop the bleeding? Am I cold and wet and need to warm up? Do I have a broken bone, a sprained ankle? So an assessment of myself, do I need to make a quick decision to get out of a situation, a dangerous situation? Also mentally, how am I doing mentally? Am I staying? calm? Am I not panicking? Uh, am I staying positive and hopeful that I will get out of the situation? So that's the first circle is my immediate person. The second circle is my immediate surroundings. So is there a wild animal nearby? Uh, am I in a floodplain? I need to move. Is, are there limbs overhead and there's a windstorm? So I just an assessment of my immediate surroundings and do I need to make a decision to get out of danger in my surroundings? And then the third circle is out beyond that. Do I have a map? Can I? Is my cell phone working? Can I get a signal? Can I call someone for rescue? Uh, do I remember some landmarks? Maybe a trail junction? You know, anything I can do to get myself off the trail into safety. So those are the three circles of survival. Hope those are helpful to you. So the last group of items I have, I'm calling the first aid items. And so uh, the first item is a quick clocked sponge. So this is the type the military uses. If you have a deep cut, open this up, put the sponge on. And then I've got some gauze here. Um, wrap that up in gauze and keep pressure on it. And then I've got my first aid kit. So in here I have a safety pin and a needle and thread for blister care. I don't have moleskin in here. I use duct tape for blister care. I've got some band-aids in there. I've got an antiseptic wipe. I've got bee sting wipes. I've got burn creams in here, more band-aids, and I've got some gauze pads in here. And I also dropped a pack of Advil and Tylenol in there as well. And then lastly, I have sunblock. So that's it for my first aid kit. I mean, a pretty light kit, but I think it covers everything I need. 
I'd be interested if you think I'm missing something, leave a comment. Uh, so, you know, I mentioned about a book. Uh, I really enjoyed this book, Touching the Void by Joe Simpson. A just an amazing story of human survival. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, uh, I've picked out another video I think you'll really enjoy. And with that, hey, I really care for you guys out there. Uh, I wish you health and safety on the trail. Happy hiking, and I'll see you next time.